in this video you will learn 10 high frequency vocabulary words that continuously show up on both the SAT and the ACT history passages. My name is Katja Severson. I'm the inventor of the Severson method, a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast. And I also wrote a book on SAT vocabulary, so feel free to check it out. So I want you to take out a blank sheet of paper and make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten numbers. And let's start noting those words. The first word would be authenticity. Authenticity shows up both in the passage and in the answer choices. Authenticity means realness of something. So authenticity showed up here on um, question 49. Passage to casts doubt on the authenticity of the data supporting the hypotheses. So the realness of the data. Here, capture the scene's authenticity. Capture the scene's realness by uh, providing detailed description of the women. Argue that his position on slavery constitutes authentic popular sovereignty. Sovereignty, my friends, is another vocabulary word. It's not included in here. It's going to be a bonus. Do maybe like an asterisk. Sovereignty min means independence. It's a sovereign country. It's an independent country. So authentic, popular independence. Next one. Here it's talking about emotional realness, emotional authenticity. And here, this is a vocabulary and context question where traditionally could also mean authentically some of the time. Next word is ambiguous. Um, ambiguous means unclear. In On the SAT passages, you're going to see the word ambiguous and unambiguous means very certain. Ambiguous, unclear, unambiguous, very certain. Another vocabulary word, kind of like an asterisk next to two, let's write the word equivocal. Equivocal and unequivocal. Same story. When something is equivocal, it's open to interpretation, kind of unclear. Something is unequivocal, it's very firm, and um, it is indisputable. Let's take a look at examples from the SAT. Douglas suggests that the Constitution's provisions for slavery are open to interpretation, whereas, whereas Sumner asserts that the Constitution's stance on slavery is unambiguous. Here, Moon is now unambiguous these unambiguous traits. Next word is seize. Do not confuse it with a one with an S. There's another verb to seize and those words are homophones, which means they sound the same, they mean completely different things, and they're spelled completely differently. This one is spelled with a C and this one means stop. Seize to exist means to stop to exist. Here, in the passage, it says, it has ceased to be the party of Lincoln. It has stopped being the party of Lincoln. This one, let us never cease from thinking. Virginia Woolf is saying, she is kind of calling women to never stop thinking. I have long ceased to regard, I think I had long ceased to regard someone as my friend. So I have, stopped, I have long stopped thinking of this person as my friend. But in the past decade, in quite a few places, this model has ceased to describe reality. This model stopped to describe reality. When man ceases to be, his power and his wants cease with him. If you guys wanted to know the difference between C's and C's, I posted this on my Instagram, so just head over to seversonmethod.com. I post some important stuff there sometimes too. Uh, next verb is to condemn. To condemn is a valuable, valuable word. Shows up in both the passage and the questions with answer choices. To condemn means to publicly denounce. Something I condemn condemned to seek out. Let us not make haste to condemn unduly. What does that even mean? Let us not make haste to condemn unduly. Haste means rush. 
So let's not rush to accuse someone publicly unduly means unnecessarily. Here, it emphasizes the point that all wrongdoing should be condemned, publicly criticized. Condemned, condemned by him. Let them condemn the speech of Patrick Henry. I hope I convinced you that condemn is an important word. Next one, one of my favorite verbs is to concede because on the essay, on the SAT essay, we have this thing called concession, which is a rhetorical device. And that is when the author agrees with the audience ahead of time. So to concede means to unwillingly agree. I concede that, but I maintain. So this is these are examples of concede for you. Wagner concedes that questions remain about whether dependence on computers will affect memories negatively. So he agrees that um, there is a question about this. It identifies and concedes, concedes a crucial shortcoming of Lincoln's argument. That is such a powerful answer choice. I think that was correct. Um, the first paragraph, the author concedes that his recommendations are. I want you to know that if the word keeps coming up, not only in the passage, but also in the answer choices, it's very likely you will see it on your own test. So please remember to concede means to unwillingly agree. Next word, a long one, enfranchisement. Enfranchisement is definitely one of those history passage words. And many of you would probably think, well, yeah, I've heard that word before. Enfranchisement means freeing someone from oppression or granting the right, granting freedom. So enfranchisement of women, the granting the right to vote, granting the right um, immediate, unconditional, and universal enfranchisement of a black man in every state in the union. We ask women's enfranchisement, freeing from something or granting the right. Genuine. Genuine is a uh, direct synonym of the word authentic. We say genuine leather, real, true. Genuine, genuine multitasking. Here, best most nearly means genuine. Genuinely original positions. To refute, powerful verb means to prove someone or something wrong. This one shows up in answer choices all of the time. Passage to refuse the central claim, to refute arguments that opponents have advanced, refute the claim, refute the claim. So you better know what refute means. Reverence. Reverence is a noun, which means respect. When you revere someone, you respect them. So reverence is respectful attitude. Other reverence. It is to be looked on with other reverence. So benevolent in feeling and action that their motives will be reverenced. Let reverence for the laws be breath breathed by every American mother. Next word is solemn. Solemn has a couple of meanings. The first one is serious. And the second one is um, grave and dull. Solemn thought serious thought, solemn inten intentness only for that which is vile and debasing. Yeah, this is from a um, international test. It is a solemn sight, always a procession. It is a serious sight. It is a sad sight. Suffrage. Suffrage is another one of those words. I think suffrage and enfranchisement, they kind of go together. Suffrage is freeing from... No, suffrage is right to vote. Suffrage is just right to vote. Don't mind me, I need attention. The, I urge a 16th Amendment because manhunt suffrage. The right of suffrage, the right to vote, will make the women masculine. Who said that? People object to the demands of those whom they choose to call the strong-minded because they say the right to vote will make the women masculine. It has bred up a class of candidates for the suffrage. 
right to suffrage is premature. Suffrage is the right to vote. Susceptible. That's a very, very cool adjective, which means you are likely to be influenced by something. Caro said regions with warmer, wetter climates are particularly susceptible to several species, susceptible to DNA damage, more susceptible to false memories, susceptible to mite infestations. You notice? They like that word a lot. Susceptible to irrational herd behavior. So this is mostly from uh, social science and natural science passages. I think I gave you a little bit more than 10. Please forgive me, but I hope you are learning new vocabulary words. Now do this. Take the piece of paper that you wrote all of those words. Put it under your desk. Put it under your chair. Hide it from your sight. Take out a blank sheet of paper and write down as many words as you can remember. Please let me know in the comments below what it is that you wrote down. And then in a couple of moments, I'm gonna flash the full list on this side. Now you can clearly match. What you wrote down means that you something that you remembered. It's okay if it's just two or three words. And if you remembered all 10, amazing. But see the difference because you were learning, you were paying attention, and now there's gonna be a gap between what you think you've learned, what you wrote down, and what you actually memorized. Don't forget, every month we choose one lucky person to get on a free one hour tutoring session with me. So if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below this video. Guess what? You get uh, entered into the draw to be a lucky person to talk to me for a whole hour about SAT, ACT, whatever you want, learning related. And um, yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys. Also, let me know what are the words that you did remember. What were the words that were surprising to you? And if you want more help with vocabulary, two ways. You can either buy the book or if you don't want to wait for the book to arrive and whatnot, um, there's a, um, on seabrissonmethod.com, we put together a course where you can get help with vocabulary and learning vocabulary for the SAT and the ACT. I'll see you guys there. Bye.